Robert Utney, owner of Wild Images in Motion, loves a challenge. The taxidermist was chosen to mount a rare two-headed fawn because the DNR knew he would represent the stillborn deer in its natural state, the way it was found. While the fawn may be Robert's most unusual mount, there are many other fascinating pieces in his collection. He goes beyond the standard trophy mount to bring his subject to life, like a leopard leaping to catch a gazelle. This is one piece I did when I was first starting out. I had an opportunity to do a leopard and I had free license to do whatever I wanted. Uh, my son helped me with some of the welding. There's a metal rod that goes, or a metal square stock that goes through the whole thing all the way down. And then this, the gazelle comes right off the leopard so for transporting. We had to come up with a, a, a balance point to get this to work, this, pro, this piece to work. And I, it's been to many shows and I'm very proud of it because it has a very small footprint for as large and as expansive as the piece is. These ideas were carrying on to more homegrown projects with white-tailed deer and mule deer. We like to, to really test the balance points of everything. Um, and that goes with our company name, Wild Images in Motion. It's about motion. I don't know that you see every, many animals just standing still. For reference, Robert uses photographs and his own experiences in the outdoors. Well, one of the things in taxidermy is that they never see the whites and the eyes in deer, and they never see the whites and the eyes in, in anything. And I spent a lot of time in Fort Snelling taking photographs of deer, and I see the whites and the eyes all the time. They have so much expression. Um, so recreating that is the magic. Robert's subjects expanded from whitetails to African safari trophies, his specialty. This is for a good friend and a customer in, in Des Moines. Uh, this is a spotted hyena. I was with him on this safari. The warthog also was on that same trip and it was in Zimbabwe. He had, it was a really old boar and he only had one eye. He was just a bruiser. I really spent a lot of time with Safari Club International. That's where I've met most of my customers. Other than that, it's been word of mouth. Internet, it's growing. Robert started doing taxidermy when he was 15 and he studied graphic design. In his early 20s, he started custom painting motorcycle helmets and was in the motorsports industry for 17 years before he went back to taxidermy. I've always had a knack for this, so I decided in my garage to start my own business and I talked to a friend of mine about it and I said, well, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. So uh, this, I'm in my seventh year. Wild Images in Motion has grown into a large studio and workshop in Savage with several employees. Three years ago, Jessica Brooks joined the business. Like Robert, she is as much an artist as a taxidermist. And she holds a degree in veterinary technology. That's kind of given me an ability to understand anatomy a lot better in taxidermy, which I don't think a lot of taxidermists have quite as much. I would consider myself more an artist because though anatomy and an understanding of all that anatomy and physiology helps, um, it's really the art side of putting everything together that turns it into what it is. I've done a couple of New Zealand possums, I've done an African wildcat, um, I've done a few genets, which are a type of African cat as well. Um, foxes, I've done blue dikers, and then I've also done normal life, normal head mounts of African animals. Nilgai are one of my favorite um, white tails I do like doing. When we visited Wild Images in Motion to watch Robert and Jessica mount a two-headed fawn, we couldn't help but notice a rhinoceros charging behind us. Robert was commissioned to mount the legally hunted rhino. We're actually customizing the form to to balance on two legs, we want them running, again, that motion thing that I have. We want them moving, not just static and standing. So we'll be doing some major alterations to the form, and then there'll be some metal fabrication on the base to, that'll mount. Um, there'll be between three and four people working on it. it should, we should be able to put the skin on in a couple days. And then it'll take a couple weeks to dry, and then uh, an animal like that, the whole thing gets painted as um, 
The tanning process takes most of the pigments out of the skin. Wild Images in Motion has become a place where artists can practice and develop their skills. Well, I'd like my business to become, and it's already started, uh, really a place for craft people to grow and have the ability to work and get paid at a decent salary um, in something that they love. There's sculpture involved, there's painting involved, there's, there's so many aspects that uh, one thing I believe right now is in the world craftspeople are starting to diminish and there's not enough of it going on. So I, my business is, part of the design was to be a destination place for really talented people. Thank you.